Welcome to our video lecture on transpiration. Our essential understanding for today is that the structure and function are correlated in xylem of plants. Xylem is the tissue through which water travels from the roots up through the stem and then out of the leaves of plants. This is basically what transpiration is all about. Our objectives for today, we're going to explain water uptake and mass flow. We're going to review active and passive transport. We're going to define what is transpiration because all of this depends on the polarity of water. We're going to review water's polarity. We're going to describe structure and function of that xylem tissue. We're going to describe how potometers can measure the rate of transpiration. And then we're going to wrap up with a quick look at adaptations that plants have to prevent too much water loss. So transport in plants happens in the vascular tissues. Vascular tissues are xylem and phloem. Uh, phloem is what transports sugars all around the plant. We're looking today just at xylem. Phloem will be a later lecture. Xylem transports water and minerals from the roots to all the cells of the plant. Again, we're going water in through the roots, up the stem, and then out the leaves. Water is taken up always at the root. So, so plants do not bring water into their leaves. Water uptake is taken in at the root. It is passive, osmosis, no energy required. The inside of the root is hypertonic. If this is hyper, that means the outside of the plant is hypo. And so water will move into the root via osmosis, no energy required. Um, there are two different paths that water can take. There's the apoplastic root and symplastic root. Symplastic root, water goes into a cell, and then from there it goes into another cell, and from there it goes into another cell. Water can also move through this apoplast, the apoplastic root, which means that it is moving between cell walls, and that space between the cells, outside cell membranes, is the apoplast. Both ways are eventually going to get the water into the xylem vessels, the xylem of the root, which is going to be the very center of the root. Right there. A uh, cool thing about roots, they have little hairs called root hairs that are going to increase the surface area. And so we're going to have these little hairs that stick off of the root, increasing surface area to allow for more water absorption to get into that root. Minerals are also taken up at the root uh, via some passive transport and some active transport. That active transport is usually indirect. We have some co-transporters. We'll look at that on the next slide. And some of the minerals that plants need to take up, magnesium, sodium, potassium, and lots of phosphates. And here's that review that I mentioned on the previous slide, active versus passive transport. So when we move ions into the roots, it can be passive through protein channels. We can also have some active transport where we're using those protein pumps. Remember that channels facilitated diffusion, passive transport. Pumps are all about some ATP and some active transport. There are a couple different ways that we can pump ions into the root. It can be um, kind of like a uniport kind of dealio where you just have that one big protein, and our ions are moving from low to high concentration into the into the root. What usually happens, though, is we have these um, co-transport or secondary transport models where we'll pump one thing out, which allows something else to come in. And so we're going to look at that in terms of mass flow. And this amazing mass flow idea. So we take up that uh, water and those minerals in at the root. We've got those branching root hairs to make this happen. But what's interesting about most of these ions that the plant wants to take in is they're positively charged. And dirt, interestingly, is negatively charged. And so there's a force of attraction between those. It's really hard for the plant to pull these guys away. And so what the plant does is it pumps out some protons. We've got these proton pumps all over the place. So hydrogen ions, protons, are going to get pumped out of the root. These guys are going to be attracted to that negative dirt, which is going to displace that hydrogen is literally knocking that calcium out of the way, and that frees up that calcium to move into the root hair. Once we move that calcium in, we now have a hypertonic um, environment inside the root, which means water will follow. Here's the cool thing. The water is polar. So when this water molecule moves in, there's this little magnetic pull the next water molecule gets pulled in, which pulls in the next water molecule, which pulls in the next water molecule. And so water will flow toward the root so that the root can uptake those water molecules. 
And just a quick look at uh, osmosis. Remember that osmosis is the movement of water across the membrane. We're going to go from where there is a low concentration of the solute particles. So the water is going to move from where there's a low concentration of the solute particles. Solute could be something like salt or sugar, or we're looking at those calcium ions on the previous slide. So the water will move from where there's fewer solute particles to where there's more solute particles moving across that membrane, that semi-permeable membrane, moving from where we have low solute to high solute concentrations. And all of this happens because water is polar. So transpiration is this inevitable consequence of gas exchange in the leaf. Because water evaporates out of the stoma, the stomata on the lower surfaces of leaves, water exits. This water is going to pull the next water up, which is going to pull the next water up because water is polar. Those hydrogen bonds hold water molecules together kind of like little magnets. Because water is moving up, it's going to pull the next water molecule up, it's going to pull the next water molecule up, which is going to pull the water molecules up through the root, which is going to pull water in from the dirt surrounding the root, which is going to draw water closer to the root. It's amazing, and it's called transpiration. And again, all of this happens because water is polar. Water sticks to other water molecules, that's called cohesive. Water also sticks to other substances that are polar. The xylem, um, parts of the xylem are polar. That makes water and xylem adhesive. They stick to each other. And that's going to lead to lots of capillary action. Capillary action is this movement of water up a tube against the force of gravity. Because water is polar, it's being attracted to the insides of the tube. The narrower the tube, the more up that water is going to move. And the reason is this, that meniscus in a wide tube, these are pretty far away from each other. In a very narrow tube, what happens is the two edges of the meniscus start to just merge and then the water just goes up and it's amazing. Water is polar. Again, amazing. The reason that water is polar is because oxygen is a little bit more electronegative. That means that oxygen is better at pulling these shared electrons toward it because the electrons are a little bit closer to the oxygen. Oxygen will have a partial negative charge. That's lowercase delta in Greek. Um, because the electrons are far away from the hydrogen atoms, what's left is for hydrogen to be a little bit positive. And so we have partially positive charges on these hydrogen sides. And here's funny, the polar bear is dissolving. And the bear is like, but bears are insoluble. And he's like, ah, but I'm polar, because polar things dissolve quite well in water. So just a quick summary of what's been happening here, transpiration. So we've got uh, this idea of water potential, the potential for water to move in to move up. Is, is what transpiration is all based on. And it's kind of amazing because it's passive transport. So again, because we have water leaving here, we have a super, super low water potential. Um, it's negative 100 megapascals. So super, super low pressure because that water is leaving. And so we have this little bit of a vacuum, which is that low, low pressure. And so water gets pulled in to fill that negative pressure, um, to fill that empty space that was left when the water moved. But then wa more water leaves the leaf, which means that more water gets pulled up. 99% of the water taken up by the roots is actually lost to evaporation through the leaves. So the great majority of water just goes up and out, right? Um, which is pretty cool. And, and it can keep going up because it keeps going out. So the water goes out, that leaves that negative pressure. And so more moves up and then more moves in and up. The pressure in the root cells is much greater. It's only a negative 0.2 as opposed to negative 100 is way lower than negative 0.2. And so the pressure is higher here, which helps to push the water up. The pressure is lower here, which pulls the water up. And then of course, because the water is polar, every time one guy moves up, it pulls the next guy up behind it. All of this is passive transport and can lead to the movement of water all the way up cool stuff like giant sequoias, which are taller than space shuttles, taller than the Statue of Liberty, taller than whales and dinosaurs. Pretty cool um, that this water can move against the force of gravity all that distance. 
So all this transpiration, this movement of water up the whole entire plant happens because xylem is amazing. Um, its structure is pretty cool to allow all this to happen. So xylem cells started off alive. They had cytoplasm and nuclei and all the cool stuff, but then they die. So mature xylem cells are not actually cells anymore. They're just um, skeletons, basically. So we have the cellulose cell walls left over. That's about it. Um, the cellulose is hydrophilic. Water is attracted to it, so little water molecules will stick here and here. The cellulose in the xylem is reinforced by this stuff called lignin. Lignin is hydrophobic, so it's kind of cool. So we've got hydrophilic and then phobic and then philic and then phobic. So the water molecules kind of jump up and over as they move up the xylem. The purpose of the lignin is to reinforce the cellulose. We talked on the previous slide about how the pressure is pretty low especially when we get to the top of the plant, that negative 100 megapascals of pressure, um, a big lack of pressure, basically, you know, vacuum-ish. And so, so that xylem could definitely just kind of collapse, get pulled in on itself with that low, low pressure. The lignin helps to reinforce it, super strong, keeping that xylem open. Xylem, um, that lignin in the xylem is basically what wood is made of. So most of wood is lignin tree trunks, lots of that super strong lignin that helps to hold our uh, xylem open. And just one more quick look reminding us that adhesion is when water is attracted to other things like the cell wall inside of xylem. So the um, forces of adhesion between the water molecules and the cell wall, the cellulose and the cell wall of the xylem help to hold it up. And then we've got that cohesion between the water molecules. And as one water molecule gets pulled out of the leaf, the next guy follows, the next guy follows. It's pretty amazing. At the very beginning of this lecture, we looked at a micrograph of um, xylem in the root. In the root, xylem is in the very middle. In the stem, it's not. So in stems, the xylem is actually in bundles, vascular bundles, along with the phloem. So we'll have xylem and phloem in these bundles. If I have a dicot stem, they're arranged in this lovely ring around the outside of the stem. If I have a monocot stem, they're kind of helter-skelter all over the place. But each one of these vascular bundles has both some xylem and some phloem. Xylem is always going to be bigger cells, more toward the center of the stem. The phloem will be on the out side of the xylem closer to the outside of the stem. When we're looking at micrograph pictures, the xylem is always going to be bigger cells. So these great big open cells here, we know it's xylem because the cells are larger. Phloem is here, the phloem where sugars tra are transported through the plant, they're much, much smaller. So phloem is small, xylem is big. Lots of big chunky cells tell us that this is xylem. Also, we have the outside of the stem here. We have phloem closer to the outside, xylem closer to the inside. And once our water gets through the xylem all the way up to the leaves, we're going to have some evaporation happen through the stoma of the leaves. So stoma are these openings. Um, they are guarded by guard cells. The guard cells can shrink and swell to close and then open the stoma. Um, sometimes the plants do not want the stoma open. They want to hold on to that water. So water will exit. Um, and the reason is diffusion. There is a lower concentration of water outside the plant. There's a higher concentration of water inside the plant. So the water will diffuse out of the stoma to where there's a lower concentration. The opposite happens for CO2. So CO2 concentration outside the plant is higher. It's lower on the inside. So again, the CO2 will diffuse into the cell through the stoma um, when those guard cells are open. Potometers are these super cool things that help us measure um, the rate of transpiration. We have a couple different ways that we can build them. So here we have tube, we have stem, we have uh, started with lots of water to get this guy to be full, 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 and then we clamp that off. So I have full, 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 no air bubbles in here. And then we're going to uh, 
do something so that the plant starts to do transpiration. So we either shine some light on it or we blow wind at it, we warm it up a little bit, and water is going to move up the tube and out of the leaf. We can measure how much water is moving up the tube and out of the leaves because now we have this pipette that is graduated and we can watch this water level go down and the rate at which this water level is going down is equal to the rate at which the water is leaving the leaf. So this is one way that we can measure transpiration. Another kind of potometer, we actually add a layer of oil and then we put the plant stem under the oil. The oil helps to prevent just the evaporation of water outside of this um, flask. Instead, all of the loss of water from this reservoir is going to be from the leaves. And so transpiration will happen outside the leaves because water will move up and out. And so the mass of this total system will be reduced. It'll go down in mass as that water moves up and out of the plant. Some plants uh, do not want to lose bunches of water. They might live in environments where water loss is a problem. Um, zero phytes are the kinds of plants that tend to live in very arid or dry habitats. Some of the adaptations that plants have, um, they might have a very thick cuticle. So this is aloe. Cuticle member is on the leaf. It's that waxy layer that helps to prevent some water loss. And you can see through the light this incredibly thick layer of waxy cuticle on this aloe plant. Some plants will have spines instead of leaves. So on a cactus, the spines are actually modified leaves. They do photosynthesis on their stem instead. Um, usually leaves are big and broad to collect lots and lots of sunshine. Cactus really doesn't need to worry about collecting lots of sunshine. There's plenty. And so photosynthesis happens on their stem instead of in the leaves. The leaves are modified to protect the water that is stored in the cactus from animals. Sometimes we have these crazy, crazy deep stomata. Remember that stomata are those holes in the leaves through which CO2 can move in and water can move out. And so this stuff, this beach grass, it actually, the leaves curl around. So this is a leaf that's curled around. So the leaves curl. And then our um, stomata are actually going to be deep, deep down in here. And so the stomata are in these little like lagoons that are formed on the inside of the curl of the leaf. And so the water can actually, the water vapor can get trapped in here. And so the plant can actually build these tiny little pockets of humidity. And the higher the humidity, the higher the concentration of water outside the plant, the more slowly the water is going to leave the plant. Other adaptations to combat water loss and this idea of photorespiration. So photorespiration sounds amazing, but it's actually really bad for plants. So what happens in photorespiration is um, because there's a lack of CO2, Rubisco will, instead of binding CO2 and RUBP, it'll start binding its RUBP to oxygen gas. Um, and then it's going to start making um, ammonia and CO2. And, and this is bad. Like, this is a bad thing for plants. Plants do not want to do that. Um, but Rubisco will do that with the O2 if there isn't enough CO2 available. But sometimes plants need to close their stomata because they're losing water too fast. But if you close the stomata to prevent water loss, you are also preventing CO2 from getting into the plant. So what some plants will do, see three plants are normal. They live in places where they don't need to worry too much about water. C4 plants like sugarcane and corn, they'll actually have different cells. They'll have one cell where they carry out photolysis and the light dependent reactions. They have different cells where carbon fixation will occur. And so they can uh, kind of store that CO2 in one spot, carry out um, Calvin cycle away from where photolysis is happening so that um, we're not losing that RUBP to Rubisco binding it to oxygen. We also have cam plants, cactus is plant cam. Um, they only open their stomata at night. So they pull in all the CO2 that they need at nighttime. They do that carbon fixation part of the Calvin cycle and they hold on to that GP. And then they close their stomata 
during the daytime so that no water is being lost, and they'll go ahead and finish the Calvin cycle then. Crazy cool. So uh, we did it. We accomplished transpiration. We accomplished our objectives. We explained water uptake, mass flow. Remember that water moves into the roots into the roots, up the stem and out of the leaves, out of the stomata of the leaves. We talked about that active and passive transport. We talked about transpiration. Transpiration is the inevitable consequence of evaporation from the leaf because water leaves the leaves, water gets pulled up the stem because water gets pulled up the stem, water gets pulled into the roots. And this all happens because water is polar. We talked about that xylem. Xylem is composed of cellulose and lignin. The cells are dead, which is interesting. And the cells are also really big. Remember when we talk about phloem, the cells are quite a bit smaller. Xylem cells are giant. We talked about those potometers, how, can, how they measure the rate of transpiration. And we talked about some of those super cool adaptations that plants have to prevent water loss.